This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week, we are heading back to South Africa for a tour of Nisna Yacht Company's 50-foot beauty, the Nisna 500 SE. Today, we will 1. Review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessel. 2. Do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? 3. Naval gaze at an innovation or adjustment that just make, might make life aboard a little easier. Four, have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables. And five, give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previously reviewed yachts. As always, all this fun will be sandwiched between a pairing of wine and a work of art from the same region as the guest yacht in an effort to capture the culture and people who gave birth to these wonderful vessels. Waves, wine, art and ideas. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. So let's get going. From high above Vancouver, we head east across the continent and the Atlantic to the western shores of France and the yards of last week's guest yacht, the Genoa Yacht 55. From here, we head south all the way down the European and African continents to picturesque Nisna in South Africa and the home of Nisna Yacht Company's 500 SE. Finally, we swing west to the vineyards of Speer Wine Farm and our wine pairing this week, Speer Seaward Cabernet Sauvignon. In 1692, Speer was one of the very first farms to be established in Stellenbach. Today, you wander the Speer wine farm, you'll find the old alongside the new, a beautiful restored manor house, an array of 21 Cape Dutch gables, more than any other farm in the country, and the oldest dated wine cellar in South Africa. The terroir ranges from decomposed granite soils to weathered shale. The vineyards are located about 6 to 20 kilometers from the ocean. The vineyards are planted on a range of aspects from flat to northeastern facing slopes that moderate uh, fun The vineyards are planted on a range of aspects from flat to northeastern facing slopes that moderate phenolic development and enhance the fruit preservation. Rich, deep, decomposed granite soils with good water retention and medium fertility result in low concentrated yields that contributed to the complexity and tannin structure of the wine. The grapes were hand harvested, destemmed, and individually sorted before undergoing inoculated fermentation in stainless steel tanks. The free run juice was barreled down from melancholic fermentation and maturation after 15 days in a combination of 80% French oak and 20% American oak barrels, mainly second fill, some third fill. The wine was matured in the same vessels for 14 months. Barrel selection was done to blend the most harmonious expression of the cool coastal region. With grapes grown in weathered shale and granite along the Cape Coast, this Cabernet Sauvignon entices with concentrated tannins and a juicy structure. 14 months in oak has softened the palate, resulting in multi-dimensional wine set to impress. Savor it with lamb loin and roasted root vegetables or beef stroganoff. Vibrant aromas of red and black berries with cedar spice deliver a complex middle palate and balanced freshness. This medium to full bodied wine shows beautiful integration. Mmm, you're gonna like that. Let's go have a look at that boat. Cheers. Having a look at the outside of the 500 SE, I mean, it, it, she is 
a little dated and yet looks still good. But you can tell she's from an earlier era of hull design, definitely. A little too slanted with the windows, a little too raked uh, uh, bow. You know, it, it's, it's, but it's still an attractive looking yacht. Uh, the uh, overall, you know, it, it, the, the, the boat gives a sense of solidity when you're on her. And you can certainly see that in the width of the hulls there. The, uh, there's nothing fancy on the roof. Having said that, in that uh, lovely uh, hard bimini, there are uh, sunroofs that slide back and forth very nicely, giving ventilation and light to the uh, cockpit itself. And of course, you have that wonderful covered helm spot there, a mid bulkhead mounted helm. Okay, what are we gonna compare this to? Well, today we're looking at the Privilege 510, the Nysna 500 SE, the Aura 51 from Fountain Peugeot, the Bali 4.8, and the new Neil 52. Looking across this, I mean, they all have a great profile. Uh, probably the most attractive of the profiles is going to be the Privilege 510, at least in, in my opinion. And as you can see, I mean, everybody else has a vertical or inverted bow. The Nisna shows a little of its age in the way uh, its raked design lies. Okay, hopping on the rooftop. Uh, looking across, of course, Privilege 510 does not have the fly lounge that the big brother has, but has an exceptionally uh, uh, sheltered mid-bulkhead helm on the port side. Uh, the Nysna 500 SE uh, has a bulkhead mid-helm on the starboard side. Uh, I do find it feels a little isolated from the water on the starboard side because of a large, uh, probably foot wide section of the bimini that, that, that protects you from that side. Um, I, I found it uh, a little too much. I, I felt too isolated. Um, the, there's lots of room for solar on the rooftop. Um, and you know you've got fairly good sized uh, trampolines on the front with uh, with a, a little bit of space there for the bean bags on the on the forward um, deck. Uh, the Aura 51 mid helm covered uh, just the perfect amount of isolation from the uh, starboard side. There's a little armrest there that makes you feel secure without being isolated. Fantastic uh, fly lounge. A uh, wonderful faux front uh, cockpit, uh, and uh, you know a huge area with optional integrated solar, so you don't really have any kind of uh, random panels all over the place. Bally 4.8, um, you know uh, this has a full flybridge, uh, a little isolating from the cockpit because it's a an external access to the flybridge. So Sylvia, if we were in rough weather, might feel very nervous about getting up to see me and might feel isolated. Uh, having said that, the payoff is down in the, uh, the, the cockpit area that we'll see in a bit. Um, and of course, you have fantastic uh, full cover uh, flybridge there. And then a forward cockpit with those that solid uh, front trampoline, which is just, you know, outstanding. You could play football out there. The Neil 52, um, obviously wider as a trimaran, but not excessively. Um, massive space on the on the uh, bim on the rooftop for huge solar opportunities without flying anything off the aft. Uh, wonderful fly lounge, beautiful sun pad up there. Really nicely redesigned. Uh, helm station uh, with really easy access to winches and helm and 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 uh, clutches uh, for a solo sailor. Uh, really nice setup. It doesn't show here, nor does it show in any other promotional material. But in the price list, it talks about a forward cockpit table somewhere out there on the bow with integrated cushions. I'd love to be able to see that. Okay, moving down into the saloon, looking across here. You can see that the um, aft cockpits are, are much of the same as far as size on all of these, slightly different dimensions, uh, save for the Bally, which has a very small aft cockpit because it has the forward cockpit, it has the flybridge, and it has the garage door that turns the 
massive saloon into part of the outdoors as well. Um, the Privilege has a, a, a port starboard split with galley on port and settee on starboard. The Nisna uh, 500 SE, um, it, it, it's a very nice cockpit. It does feel a little crowded when you're in there. Um, you can tell it's a little older design. Uh, you know, the settee with all those curves, there's nowhere really to stretch out. But um, it, it certainly is a welcoming environment. The Aura 51, completely new, and I love the layout for the layout's sake. I mean, it really does feel luxurious. It has a separate seating area away from the uh, dinette, which I love. It has an island. Uh, the cockpit's very nicely laid out, great access to the mid-helm. Uh, and of course, you have that forward cockpit as well. I'm not in love with the lack of finish on parts of the uh, saloon ceiling and certainly not a fan of what they do with the underside of the cockpit bimini. It feels very unfinished to me but overall the layout is outstanding. The Bally uh, 4.8 uh, you know very unusual in its layout. Uh, you have a, a massive saloon very similar to a large mono hull where you have settee on, on port and dinette large l-shaped dinette on starboard massive galley area, forward-facing nav, uh, access through onto the front cockpit, which is outstanding for safety and convenience. Uh, very nice layout there. Uh, the Neil 52 really love what they've done with the new design. They, they maybe didn't take it quite far enough, but they've done a heck of an evolution on this. Of course, you have a lovely aft cockpit area. Uh, you have then in your saloon uh, very nice large um, uh, settee slash dinette, which as you can see with those cockloon doors that open completely connects with the external dinette in the cockpit, giving a massive area for entertainment. And then they have uh, shrunk up a little bit of the space dedicated to the owner's uh, main deck uh, uh, cabin, uh, and yet um, they've turned the bed around, which is nice. And then you have the down the access into the starboard ama for your massive dressing room, uh, beautiful uh, head and shower, and of all things, a full laundry room. Absolutely spectacular. Love the fact that the galley now is off to the forward starboard. Uh, having the um, forward-facing nav station with the double chair there really opens up the space. You can see, you can imagine when you walk in there and you look forward, all you see is a sort of relaxation living room area and it, it feels huge. Okay, looking down now into the hulls at your accommodations, privilege 510 has uh, two aft butt scoot beds for guests and then the mother of all owner suite in the bow. Uh, full beam on a catamaran <laughs> with a, a head in one side, dressing room in the other and, and, and full three-sided access for your queen or king size bed, whatever it is up there. Absolutely staggering if you can see it in this configuration. Nisna 500 SE, uh, you know, your, your, um, your feeling and your fit and your finish is lovely. The, the uh, fore aft bunks uh, in the owner's side, it's quite high. Um, I, I wouldn't classify it as a full three-sided access. Uh, so a little dated in the design there, but everything feels quite nice. Your, uh, your passenger side or your guest side there, again, you've got a fore-aft uh, butt scoot in the aft, and then you have a two-sided thwart ship in the bow. The Aura 51, they did extraordinarily with this design on your port side owner's hull. Full three side, uh, standard height, queen size berth there, a massive, lovely settee, huge forward uh, head, washroom, double sinks. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for more. And then your uh, passenger side, you've got loads of space there. Maybe you want to convert that mid one into, into something like a, a pantry or something. It totally up to you. But I mean, huge amounts of space, really nicely laid out. Uh, the Bally 4.8, again, massive space here. That owner's hull, 
uh, similar to the Aura 51. It was, you know, beautiful, three-side, full-axis, standard-height berth, uh, massive space all around there. And uh, your passenger side, again, massive VIP, three-side access, uh, forward athwart ship, um, and, you know, just a tremendous layout there. Uh, your Neil 52, of course, you've got that wonderful owner's uh, berth up, stairs already, uh, the uh, starboard AMA there, as you can see in the aft, it's your dressing room, massive dressing room, massive storage, uh, midships in the AMA is your uh, head and shower, and then through a door in the back of the shower, you head up to the forward dedicated laundry room, absolutely extraordinary. Uh, in the center hull, you have a, 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 a wall-to-wall butt scoot bed, um, very nice size, great location, low and in the middle. So if you're in rough waters, you might want to use that berth at times. Uh, and then you do have a wet head uh, that, act, that serves both that center low berth as well as the bow berth, which can be a double or two, uh, pu- uh, two uh, bunks. And then in the port AMA, you have a whole bunch of configurations here, of course. Uh, you know, full uh, size VIP suite with uh, dry head, um, and then uh, again uh, access through to the bow, which could be a cabin or it can be uh, a workshop. Or I mean, you just have no lack of space on this thing. Okay, looking at the numbers here, heading across the top line, you can. Uh, see that it is the uh, Bali that is the most economical at 850,000 euro. Uh, that's followed closely by the Neil at 946. Uh, then it's the um, Fountain Peugeot at a million forty-seven, the Nisen at a million eighty-five, and the Privilege way out front at two three three two. Now. Again, the privilege and the Nisna a little uh, handicapped here because they are hugely loaded up as a standard offering. Uh, and so I can't apply the same 50% for sail away to these. It's a radically different thing. If you have a quick look down at the USD numbers here, uh, you can see the most economical sail away is in fact the Nisna at 1.3. Then it's the Bali at 1.4. Uh, then it is the Neil at 1.5, the Fountain at 1.7, and the Privilege at 2.65. Uh, looking down at length overall, it's the Privilege is the longest at 56. Length at the waterline, it's the Fountain Peugeot that's the longest at about 51. Uh, looking at draft, it is the Fountain Peugeot with the least draft at 1.3 meters or 4.36 feet. Uh, didn't bridge deck clearance was uh, pretty scarce. Uh, I found it for the Fountain Peugeot. Uh, it's a healthy 5.43 feet. Uh, air draft, it was the Neil, the tallest at 79 feet. And uh, the light ship displacement, it is the Bally at 13.4 tons with 8.5 tons of payload capacity. Um, the next would be a very, very close on its heels is the Neil at 3.5 uh, tons. They've taken several tons out of this new design. Uh, then it's going to be your Nisna at 16 tons, which is a bit of a surprise to me, uh, followed by the Privilege at 16.8 tons. And then the heaviest is, is the Fountain Peugeot at 18.1 tons. And that, that did surprise me. Uh, the upwind sail area here. Uh, we're looking at uh, the Neil at 173 square meters, or 1,862 feet. That would be uh, the biggest, uh, and then that's followed by the Fountain Peugeot at 154 square meters, or 1,658 square feet. Uh, and then that is followed by the Privilege at 145, or 1,560 uh, looking at the engine power here, it would be uh, among the comparables, because of course the Neil has a single engine, but among the dual comparables, it's the Privilege at twin 80s, which is significantly larger than any of the others, which are about 60. And of course the Neil has a single 110. Uh, fuel, t- fuel and water capacity, it's the Bally by uh, quite a margin at 1,000 liters of fuel and 1,120 liters of water. 
the next closest is going to be the Fountain Peugeot at 900 and 900, followed by the Privilege at 800 and 600, Neil at 7 and 6, and then the Nysna at 600 and 600. Uh, Blackwater capacity, I could only find it for the Privilege and the Nysna. The Privilege has the greatest at 206. Uh, looking down at the numbers that I hope you're bothering your brokers and <clears throat> the manufacturers for, that being interior square footage, exterior square footage, interior and closed storage uh, volume, exterior locker volume, total fridge and total freezer capacity. Uh, on this, I was uh, able to find most of the fridge and freezer capacity, save for the Neal. And the biggest one, no surprise to anybody with its uh, modern American style fridge, is the Bali <clears throat> at uh, 308.5 liters uh, for free fridge and 308.5 for freezer. Okay, getting into the more technical data here, we'll first look at hull construction. And this may surprise you. It is the Nysna, well in front, with a pure vinyl ester on foam, e-glass vacuum-infused hull. Uh, the rest are much of the same. They would be predominantly uh, polyester uh, with a vinyl ester layer, uh, and all of them have a foam core. Uh, looking at... Um, Max battery capacity. I really the, the Nysna comes really well loaded. You got 16.5 kilowatt hours of lithium as standard. Uh, the only other one I could find was the Neil, and it has 5.94 six six kilowatt hours. Um, the uh, solar panels available uh, by far the largest, of course, is the Neil, uh, 3.5 uh, kilowatts. On, the, on that massive roof. They're all flexible. Uh, the next one is going to be the Fountain Peugeot with 2,000 watts flexible. Uh, then the uh, Privilege at 1780 ventilated glass and the Nysnet 1736 flexible. Getting down into the performance indicators, here it is a clean sweep for the Neil 52. Uh, looking at sail area to displacement or an indicator of power, it's the Neil at 31. Uh, the next closest to that is a distant second, the Bally at 23. Then the Fountain Peugeot at 22.7, Privilege at 22, and the Nysna at 20. Looking at displacement to hull length at the waterline or an indicator of heaviness, here, here it's the lowest number wins, and that's the Neil at 119.4. The next closest is the Bali at 134.9, uh, followed by the Privilege at 135, the Fountain Peugeot just behind that at 136.3, and the Nysna distant last place at 169.5. So looking at the KSP number, or what would be an indicative number of percentage of uh, wind speed performance at 10 knots, uh, leader is the Neil at a highly respectable 87%. Uh, that would be followed by the Fountain Peugeot and the Bally, both tied at 73%. Next is the Privilege. Given the size of that thing, uh, a very respectable 71%. And last place is the Nysna at 66%. Uh, still ahead of a Lagoon, but just barely. If you're enjoying the content, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Then share the channel with a couple of friends and hit the like button. It's free and really helps the channel. You can also join our crew on Patreon where you can enjoy ad-free viewing as well as downloads of the Excel specification and PowerPoint layout comparisons while helping the channel for a few dollars a month. You can find a link to the Naval Gazing at Camp David Patreon channel in the description below where you can also click to receive our free ebook and information on some really cool virtual sailing training. And speaking of cool, my friends at catamaranshow.com have developed an amazing website and database of every catamaran available and scheduled to launch that allows you to do selectable in-depth comparisons of three cats at a time. 
They are also working on an incredible virtual tour and on-the-fly configurator that provides the option of fully immersive virtual reality with the appropriate 3D goggles. This is an incredible resource for anyone considering a catamaran purchase. Have a look by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, hopping aboard, what would Sylvia say? Well, um, I, I know that Sylvia would like this. Uh, I mean, she'd like every aspect of this boat. Uh, she wouldn't really be tuned into the maybe slightly dated hull shape and whatnot. She'd have a look at the finishes and just the overall uh, look and feel of this vessel, and she'd love it. It feels sturdy. It feels strong. Uh, it feels open and airy, and it feels exceptionally high quality in every aspect, everywhere you touch. Uh, really nice um, entry onto the sugar scoops, good and wide. Uh, lots of room there. Very nice uh, barbecue mount on the aft there for a, a, a real a propane barbecue. You'll note the in-boom furling, really a nice feature. And you'll see the power furling on the head sails very shortly here as well. You can also see here a very nice uh, electric platform for your dinghy that extends your aft entertainment area quite exceptionally. Look at the stainless steel work here and look at that beautiful shower head as you enter the boat. Really, really nice hand holds everywhere you look. Uh, really nice integrated um, um, uh, clears or, or uh, canvas around to enclose this and give you even greater space. Uh, all of your uh, up, um, soft goods are super high quality. You don't see any wrinkles in there. It, it's always looking tight. Beautiful real teak table uh, with fiddles on it and it's a nice shape to it. It, it really, really looks good. Um, heading up the wide side decks, uh, you'll see um, that's Darla May there. If you ever have a chance to speak to Darla May, do it. This lady knows her stuff, and man, if I could bottle her personality, I'd make millions. Anyways, looking onto the solar there, you can see significant solar. There's that sunroof panel that we were talking about. Um, and, you know, again, all your finishes right down to the Chrome logo looks real good. The windows look good. Uh, the integration of the solar is extremely nicely done. Um, you've got some uh, nice uh, faux teak up here as well. Uh, easy on the feet, nice to grip on, especially if you're heading up onto the cabin top. You've got good ventilation, uh, um, sealing vents in the saloon there, as you can see. And there's your uh, furling boom uh, with controls to make sure that angle stays just the way it needs to. Uh, I mean, again, there's so many discussions about furling booms, just like there used to be about furling um, masts. Uh, the bottom line is you'll sail more if you have them because it's easier to reef, it's faster to reef, uh, it's neater. You don't have all those lines heading down to your lazy bag. You don't have reefing lines. There are so many advantages to a furling system in master in boom and, of course, on a cat predominantly in boom. Heading forward, you've got the very nice princess seats there. Um, and you can see you've got an electric furler on the inner sail and a standard furler on the head sail. Uh, nice integrated steps in the mast that'll take you up there, but the mast or the boom itself is at a very nice level. So if anything did go wrong, you're easy to get up there and access it and, and take care of business. So it's just a very functional, rugged vessel. Uh, you know, it really gives you that sense as you're walking around on the deck here. Uh, the, you know, the, uh, the windlass and the chain there, for my liking, are a little exposed. I'd rather a chain in its own channel with a cover over it so that I don't get gunk all over the gel coat. Uh, but, you know, I'm nitpicky right now. Uh, again, really nice place to be. You've got your foot controls for your windlass there. And of course, you have a remote as well. Um, easy access, very safe access up onto uh, the bimini top. And 
I mean, Darla May's not a tall lady, and she's easily able to access that. Uh, and this uh, furler is, again, a full open top. So um, it's a furler craft um, in-boom furling with the open top as opposed to a, a small channel that the sail would come out. And, and the reason there is that you can easily access the, the, the sail if anything goes wrong. There's also a really slick... Um, cover that slides over that area uh, with a little line that you grab. Good storage up in the bow area here. You can see that easily. And very, you know, nice sized uh, trampoline. So you've got good uh, space there, but you've also got great deck space on the foredeck here uh, where you can put up a couple of chairs or bean bags or whatever you might want wide side decks there there are obviously the the deck hatches are not recessed um but you know if i did which i would i i put uh faux teak down the decks it would reduce uh the the profile a little bit you can see looking across you know the the molds even for the top look solid and feel solid um, look at the, the handrails all the way down the bimini side. Uh, so real focus on safety. Of course, you know, where these things live uh, 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 down in South Africa, it's some um, pretty rough waters. You can see again there uh, the retractable um, sunroof uh, right behind the helm station. You can see on this rainy day. Um, the helm station is fully enclosed by clears, but you can also see that, that what I was talking there on the starboard side, you're, you're fairly well isolated from the water. I find it a little too much. You've got some of your winches right there, which is rather convenient. Um, but, uh, I, I prefer a little narrower. I, I like the idea of something between me and the water, but I prefer the way Fountain Peugeot has done. They've, they've reduced the, the width of that a little bit, but, um, Looking all over this, you can see nothing is rough. Nothing is unfinished. Uh, everything is very, very nicely done right down to the lovely fitted um, uh, sun uh, solar panels. Uh, great barbecue area there. And then heading into the cockpit again, you know, look at the soft goods. You don't see any wrinkles there. Nicely uh, embroidered uh, logoing in the back of the helm seat. Um, nice curves uh, again a little dated in that nature but you know it's done extremely well uh, and the uh, canvas really does give you a sense of security you can see how this would be really <clears throat> beautifully expanded out if you were in you know uh, bad weather or if you were doing a little late season sailing up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, again look at that comfortable helm seat sturdy 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 uh, and uh, it it slides forward as well so that you can use it as an extra seat uh, sort of facing into the cockpit. Uh, looking around here, you can see, you know, the view from uh, the helm station. You can see the, the forward, uh, the bows. You, to see the uh, stern uh, hulls, you've got to bend down. Um, nice uh, view, though, all the way around. Great dashboard for all of your... Um, uh, uh, electronics, uh, lots of real estate here, nothing cramped, um, nice great wheel, and, and, and tremendous communication uh, with the cockpit itself. And here, <clears throat> Darla May is trying to <laughs> reach that. She's just not quite that tall. I think the captain rolls in. There he is. That's our delivery captain, and he's going to show us how this uh, opens up. And it's, uh, I think it's a, a great idea, you know, um, uh, is it uh, Excess has done their T-top thing where it's similar to the sailboats uh, with the hard tops where there's a center section that's canvas, uh, but this uh, is even more secure, really nice. Now, this is where Nisna shines. Okay, you know, the, this, this is absolutely a gorgeous interior, and you can choose all of this. You're getting a boat at the price we talked about that is fully customizable and made for you. Um, you can see how it is a little crowded in here, but boy, it's pretty. Uh, everything from the countertops to the beautiful gloss veneers to the, the finishes in the ceiling, the two-tone finishes, the embedded... Uh, lighting, the the the, the uh, uh, dinette table, real wood, high gloss, absolutely gorgeous. 
Um, and then here we've got uh, your uh, uh, TV there. Plus, uh, you can have, instead of that um, sort of uh, butler's bar over on the uh, uh, starboard there, you can have that as a forward-facing nav if you wish. Again, a lot of customization available here. A very nice galley there. Let's look at a little navel gazing. Today, we're going to get a little excessive. So you're out there... <laughs> On the, on the ocean, and you don't want to get hammered every night, but you'd love a glass of wine. And you really don't want your wines going bad on you. So here's an idea. You can now afford to have an on-tap wine dispenser uh, in your yacht. And who doesn't need a wine dispenser that allows you to have your favorite red, white, rosé, and champagne open for a glass or two tonight and a sip on the foredeck two days from now from the same bottle without sacrificing quality, uh, the quality of the experience. In fact, with its argon preservation system and single compressor refrigeration, the bottles that you pour from today will remain as good as if you had freshly pulled the cork for two, two to three weeks. Now you can offer a full selection to your friends without wasting a bottle that you just can't finish. Uh, I know that doesn't happen often, but you know what I mean. Bottles are opened, and then a spigot that reaches down to the bottom is screwed firmly to the top. When you close the door, there's a pleasant backlight, and all the controls are across the front of the unit. You can select the fridge temperature, and then to pour, you have two choices. Above each bottle, there is a glass icon and a bottle icon. The glass icon will dispense an additional ounce of wine with each push. So if you want three ounces, push it three times in a row. The bottle icon is a free pour, but you can see how many ounces you've dispensed on the readout. Wine is dispensed by pushing inert argon gas into the bottle, pushing the wine out and completely shielding the nectar of the gods from any exposure to oxygen. For those major passages, you can hook up almost any size of argon bottle you desire. The unit can be freestanding or built in, and there's a four bottle version for 2900 or a two bottle version for 1400. For the true connoisseurs out there, just buy two two bottle dispensers so you can have separate temperature settings for your two sets of two wines. What could possibly be better? Okay, back on board. Here is that sort of butler's pantry I was talking about just across uh, from the galley, and you can see the galley in this one is fully electric. Um, and quite spacious. You got lots of countertop, lots of entertaining space, a little upper bar area that you can serve out from, certainly out into the cockpit. And, uh, you know, everything feels very, very high quality. Now let's head down these beautiful steps. You'll note the hatches in the, in the um, hulls. They're not just holes in the floor that you pull up on. There's a beautiful stainless steel uh, latch. And here, this is a, a, a letter out of Tomas's book over at uh, Exquisite, full built-in toolkit. But look at the quality of these veneers. And everywhere you look on the ledges, you have stainless steel fiddles to make sure nothing just slides away, or you have a standard fiddle. Everything is highly, highly practical. Look at the detail in these beautiful latticework cupboard, cupboard faces. So beautiful free flow of air in and through, keeping everything dry, and yet an absolute artistic uh, flare to the whole thing. Then you've got your engines under the uh, two aft berths. So lots of uh, internal access. So you're not, if it's something goes wrong and you're heavy seas, you're not uh, holding on for dear life out the back of the, uh, the yacht. Uh, here we have the um, beautiful head and dry shower. Uh, again, you know, the quality of the sole here is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, all your electronics here, and um, we will see a little later on how easily accessed they are, but look at the hardwood finish on each of the corners and, and then the rounding. Uh, that's a lot of work, a lot of skilled craftsmanship uh, going into the joinery on this vessel. Uh, again, look at your doors, look at the, the uh, hardware that's part of each one. Absolutely gorgeous, nice heavy metal. Uh, and in the latches for each of those compartments, a beautiful uh, little settee at the foot of uh, your guest athwartship berth. As, as we noted, uh, you can access sort of two sides of this. 
Uh, well, yeah, I guess you could almost call it three sides. Um, and you've got lovely woodwork in the back. Look at even the uh, diamond stitched wall coverings there and the beautiful shelves with your backlighting, your indirect lighting. Uh, I mean, it really is a feast for the eyes as you walk around this. I know that Sylvia would just just love the look of this vessel. Uh, we're looking again at that fabulous drawer of tools there. That's what, that's what I love. Um, the diamond stitching in, in the wall upholstery is beautiful. Uh, again, all your overhead cupboards, lots of storage everywhere you look. Uh, and the head is, is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you've got a, a full uh, um, enclosed shower, beautifully etched uh, glass shower doors, uh, all of your lighting and, and your cabinetry, again, beautifully, beautifully done. Um, it, you know, really feels like a yacht as opposed to a, a plastic bottle turned inside out. Uh, it, you know, I, again, uh, looking at this bed, uh, you know, you can... I, I could get out of this without disturbing Sylvia. It, it, it isn't a true butt scoot bed. Uh, so that's that's nice to see. I mean, it is quite high, uh, but oh well. Uh, your electronics here, you can see them, everything nicely laid out in your, uh, is that called a C view? I guess it is, uh, where you've got all of your controls right there on a single panel, um, as well as uh, your manual um uh, your manual circuit breakers. Um, <clears throat> really, really nicely done. Uh, all of your, uh, you know, controls for whether it be your water maker or your generator. And uh, bear in mind, this comes standard with lithium. I think it comes standard with the water maker. Uh, there's a host of stuff on this that is standard. Your Options list is very slim. I really had to scrounge to find a couple of hundred to tack on to the base price. And, and I generally like things really well loaded. Beautiful uh, lighting inside your cabinets here. You saw the, the, the quality of the wiring layout and the labeling inside here. Just gives you a sense of the craftsmanship that they put into every aspect of this vessel. Uh, again, in uh, the uh, uh, owner's hull here now on the other side, you've got a lovely settee so I can sit, put on my shoes, uh, lots of uh, storage areas there with the beautiful latticework uh, tops, etched glass. Uh, you know, they haven't missed a trick as far as the overall look and feel of this. And now in this one with the with the bed down, you'll note in the, in the other one, um, the bed was up to show you engine access, but you can see the beautiful view you actually have out those uh, angular windows on the side. It would be a very, very nice space, uh, something similar to the seascape windows in an oyster. Um, and when you look down this hull, uh, you know, oyster sort of comes to mind. It really is a beautifully, beautifully done yacht. In this one, uh, they had carpet on the owner's side, which just added another layer of luxury. Um, everything, every cupboard, every button you press is, is such high quality and everything that you want to get at is easily accessible. There's your, uh, water maker, um, behind these, it, you know, everything is done to be easy and accessible, uh, and, and really comfortable for the owner to access it without tearing the boat apart. Uh, or, uh, again, without, you know, as, as, as an example, the access into the hull soles, uh, you don't have just simple holes. You stick your finger and drag them up, which really looks classless. Here you've got a lovely stainless steel fixture that uh, does the job for you. Uh, again, owner's hull, uh, back wall of the uh, shower, the dry shower, uh, you have your uh, washer. And it is a top load washer in this case. Um, so very, very nice. It looks to me like, you, you know, you, you'd have access to do a washer or have the space to do a washer dryer in here. Um, I unfortunately didn't ask Darla on that one. Okay. What do we compare this to? Again, remember, uh, we are uh, coming up with a sail away price on the new Nisna. Uh, to compare it to uh, the obvious sail away prices on these uh, used, slightly used vessels we compare it to. 
Typically, I'd ask, add 50% to the base price, but I just can't in all good conscience do that to Nijna because I couldn't find that much to add to it. It comes so heavily uh, optioned out uh, uh, right from the factory. So in this case, we're looking at a 2019 Lagoon 50, a very nice vessel. They're asking 1.180 million versus the well-equipped um, um, Nijna at 1.3 there isn't a single question. I would pay the 120 and take my brand new Nisna. Next up, we're looking at a 2019 Nisna. Um, they're looking at uh, uh, 1.5 on, no, sorry, that's Australian. They're looking at a million, basically 985,000 for this, uh, for a four year old 500 SE. Uh, versus 1.3 for the new one. Um, you know, depending on the condition of the vessel, uh, I might go for this pre-owned. It's hard to find a pre-owned Nisna, um, but I can see that it does not have the furling boom, which is something that I'd like. So I might end up just going to the new one. Finally, we've got a 2021 Leopard. So a two-year-old 50. They're asking 1.325 versus 1.3 for my fully customized Nisna. Uh, I love so many things about the Leopard, but there'd be no question in my mind, I'd take my custom for Dave Nisna all day long. Okay, Monohull Heresy. What do we compare this to on the Monohull side? Of course, you know we add about 20% to length to get equivalent interior living space. And in this case, we're looking sort of 60 to 65 foot mono hulls. First up is a 2019 Beneteau Oceanus Yacht 62. So you're looking at a four-year-old boat. They're asking one point, basically 1.2 versus 1.3 for my Nisna. Now the, the Beneteau Oceanus with the hard top is a lovely vessel. Uh, but in this case, I would definitely do my made for me Nisna at 1.3 for a brand new boat. Uh, here's a favorite of mine, of course, is the Hansa 588. We're looking at a 2019, so a four-year-old vessel, 825,000 versus 1.3 for the Nisna. Um, it, it's on the edge, but I would scrounge up the, what, 475 and probably do the Nisna. Uh, next up, we are looking at a Dufour 61, a 2022, so a one-year-old boat. They're asking 1.516, not a hope in Hades. I would be on my made-for-me Nisna at 1.3. So the Nisna did extremely well across the board. So it's time for the Dave score. How did she do? Well, down, down, down. Oh, she comes up real quick. Here she is. The Nisna 500 SE at 73 points. We're looking at uh, elegance of the interior is an 8. It's just a little crowded, and I'd, I'd like the beds to be laid out better. Uh, certainly, you know, a full vote for a, a new hull design in the hands of these folks. Of course, they've got their uh, 550 that's a lovely vessel as well. Uh, elegance on the exterior, 7. There's there's not a lot going on there. There's no forward cockpit. There's no uh, fly flying lounge. So, you know, 7, but still nicely done. Comfort on the interior, an 8. Uh, again, you know, uh, a little crowded in, in, in the bed layout. Uh, not the best, but everything else beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, exterior, a 7. Um, quality, a 9. I mean, everywhere you look, you felt extremely confident in the quality of this manufacturer. Performance, a, a 7. Probably should be closer to a 6, really, uh, at 66% wind speed on the KSP. Uh, Lazy Sailor, a 6. There's nothing that makes it much easier on this uh, single helm, quite isolated. Condo a seven, uh, just because it, it it's not higher. Uh, it certainly feels luxurious like a condo, but the space is a little, feels a little cramped. Geek a six. There's nothing really to geek out on this. Value for money a really solid eight, giving us a 73 out of 100, putting us right in league with a Fountain Peugeot or a 51 for very different reasons. But I feel it it belongs there, slightly ahead of the Leopard 50. Debatable, but you know it's a point difference. Uh, same as the Genoa 65 and a 60 and a monohull. Uh, so 
Yeah, I think uh, that's about the right placement for it on the Dave score. Our Art of the Region this week is Fishing by Benson Sharemba. The great thing about South Africa is I have no problem finding art that I absolutely love. Benson Chiremba is an African artist born in Zimbabwe who works between Africa and Europe but regards the UK as his home. His paintings are mainly about the African style of living and are centered around humans feeling their emotions. His images which go beyond the canvas with exaggerated brush strokes and a contrast of colors as a reflection of African beauty. He has exhibited extensively in Zimbabwe, Europe, and America, and has paintings in several permanent collections. Well, that's our Waves, Wine, Art, and Ideas for another week. I do hope you enjoyed this vessel. I love what Nisna is doing, and I am cheering for them all the way. I, I'm looking forward to a new 50 hull. I, I think what they've done with their 550 is really nice. I would love to see them do a new 50. I'd love to see them do a new 46. These guys uh, are building a quality product with finishes that I absolutely love. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Cheers.